This dialogue sounds pretty bad. And this dialogue sounds a lot better. I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Let's take a look. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Jay, and if you're into things like video editing tutorials, gear reviews, and vlogs about being a full-time creator, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you can get notified whenever I upload a new video. Today we're talking about dialogue. A lot of you guys have been asking me how I edit my dialogue, especially since I did a review on this microphone about a week ago. You guys all wanted to know how I got the dialogue sounding the way that I got it, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But before we do that, before we jump into the actual tutorial, we need to talk about the recording process because really when it comes to getting good sounding dialogue, it all starts with the recording. And there's really two things to keep in mind. One, you want to be using the right microphone for the right situation. And two, you want to have your levels set before you hit record. So if you're popping a new microphone onto your camera for the first time, or even if you're going through a mixing board, make sure you set your recording levels so that the dialogue is peaking somewhere between negative 12 and negative 6 dB. If you look at an audio meter, you have that green section, that yellow section, and that red section. You want your dialogue to be peaking somewhere in that yellow section. Now I've got that sequence from the beginning of this video queued up in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to show you how I edit this in DaVinci, but if you're using a different editing software, as long as you can normalize your audio at a compressor, add EQ and add a limiter, you should be able to follow along as well. And with that being said, let's dive in. All right, so we're here in the Fairlight Audio tab in DaVinci Resolve. For those of you who are following along in the same software, let's just take a look at what I am going to be working with today. Over here to the left, we have our Fairlight effects. We may or may not be using some of these, specifically the de-esser, depending on how everything sounds. Over to the right in the middle, we have all of the audio that's in our timeline. Over to the right, we have our mixer, and at some point, we will be going into the inspector to do a little bit of tweaking with the volume. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is normalize our audio. And normalization is actually a two-part process. There's the automatic normal normalization that you can do within pretty much any editing software, but then you want to take an extra step and go through each clip individually and make sure that they all sound like they're at the same level. And the reason why we go through each clip individually is because normalization just raises and lowers the volume until your highest peak in the clip reaches the point that you set. So if you set your normalization level to negative 3 dB, it's going to raise or lower each clip until the highest peak of that that clip hits negative 3 dB. The problem is each clip has a different highest peak, so they're gonna sound a little bit different. You really wanna go back and make sure that overall everything sounds like it's at the same level. Now in this tutorial, I don't have to go through each clip because we're actually only editing this clip that's in audio too, but I still want to normalize it. So all I'm gonna do is right click on the clip, I'm gonna go down and normalize audio levels, and I'm gonna normalize to negative six. Hit normalize, and there we go. Like I said, I'm not doing anything up until audio one because for the purposes of this video, for comparison, I want just the raw audio out of the microphone up here. The next thing that I wanna do is change this track from a stereo track to a mono track. If you are editing dialogue and you also have music behind it and sound effects and ambient noise, you definitely wanna change your dialogue tracks to a mono track. And that's because when you're messing with stereo width, which sometimes I do, you can see in my big DaVinci Resolve tutorial that I messed with the stereo width a little bit, I want my dialogue to stay in the center of that spectrum. So in order to do that, I need to change it to a mono track and to do that is very easy again we're gonna come over here to the track we're gonna right click on the track we're gonna go to change track type to mono all right step three is kind of optional you don't really have to do this but it's something that I tend to do as a above and beyond thing is I want to get rid of any extreme peaking before I do any kind of compression or limiting or anything like that and that's it's just gonna make the edit a lot cleaner down the road 
So if you look at our audio clip, you can see right around here, we have a pretty big peak in comparison to the rest of the clip. We want to get rid of that and we're going to use keyframes in order to do that. So we're just going to bring our playhead over here. I'm going to zoom in on this track just a little bit. That should be good. I'm going to set a keyframe, open up our inspector. Going to add a keyframe. Add another keyframe. And another keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and bring the volume down on that one peak just to even everything out. Zoom that out. Make sure we got rid of the peak. Everything looks fairly even there. We're going to go ahead and renormalize this clip to negative six. And that looks pretty good. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is add a compressor. And a compressor does exactly what you might think it does. It compresses the waveform. It takes your lowest volumes and brings it up. It takes your highest volumes and brings them down. It makes it so your volume throughout each track, each clip is fairly level and it doesn't fluctuate too much. And this will end up because it's bringing that low end up a little bit. It's going to actually give you a fuller sound in your voice. Just a word of caution. You don't want to compress too much because if you do, you're going to end up sounding like a robot because there'll be no fluctuation whatsoever in your voice. Now in most editing softwares you take the compressor effect and you drag it onto your clip and you edit from there. In DaVinci Resolve it's actually a little bit simpler than that. Let's dive in. All right, so to add a compressor, we're actually gonna add the compressor across the whole track here. So I'm gonna just come over to Dynamics for Audio 2 and double click. And you can see down here we have expander, gate, compressor, and limiter. We're going to go ahead and add that compressor by clicking on compressor. I'm going to keep this at a two to one ratio. We're going to lower the attack, lower the release, and bring the threshold to negative 15. I'm going to bring up our gain a little bit until the top of this line hits the corner. 7.5, that looks good. And we're done. All right, the next step is where the magic happens. Now we're gonna mess with the EQ a little bit. And once again, I'm doing the effects across the entire track because everything is filmed with the same microphone in the same location. If you wanna EQ track by track, you can just click on your track, open up your inspector, and activate the clip equalizer. Get out of the inspector. We're gonna come over here to audio two double click equalizer. So the first thing we're going to do is activate band one and band six. That's going to get rid of some unwanted noise on the low and the high end of our dialogue. We're then going to change the pattern of band two to Q. Same thing over on band five. And then going to take our Q factor and bring it all the way down on those same two tracks. I'm going to come over here to band two. We're going to raise that up to plus 15. Come over to band five, raise that up to plus 10. And we're going to take bands three and four and bring them down. And listening to that back, it sounds a little tinny to me, so I actually wanna go back into my compressor and compress that just a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the threshold and raise the gain. And from there, you just wanna keep going back and forth between your compressor and your equalizer until it sounds just right. All right, I've got it sounding almost exactly how I want it. The only thing I want to do now is add a limiter to limit some of the fluctuation in the voice. 
So I'm gonna come back over here to dynamics and double click. I'm gonna activate my limiter. I'm gonna bring that down to 14. I'm gonna set my threshold to 15. I'm gonna bring my attack down. I'm gonna bring my release down. Now there's another thing that I wanna do here, which is get rid of some of the noise. There's a lot of noise under all my dialogue. There's the, the compressor from this little mini fridge right behind me. There's the buzzing from the lights. There's just, there's just noise. This is not a very uh, sound friendly room. So back in Dynamics again, we're gonna activate our gate. Let's increase the hold a little bit because it's cutting my voice out just a little bit too much. And that sounds perfect. Take a listen. This dialogue sounds pretty bad. And this dialogue sounds a lot better. I'm gonna show you how to do this right now. Let's take a look. Now these settings, these effects that I use, the effects that I use are pretty much standard. You wanna use these same effects, the, the noise gate and the limiter and the compression and all that stuff. You wanna use those, but as far as the specific settings, you wanna make sure to go through and tweak them to your liking. Everything that I did was based on what I know about this microphone, what I know about my own voice, what I know about this room and how the sound carries in this room. Everything is custom, everything is tweaked. There is no one size fits all settings for your dialogue. You really need to play around with it and get the sound that you like. But either way, I hope that this helped and I hope that it at least pointed you in the right direction so you know kind of how to think about your dialogue dialogue and and how to kind of get this sound that you want and if it did please let me know in the comments give this video a like if it didn't and you still have more questions again let me know in the comments I'd be happy to help you as much as I possibly can and with that like this video if you enjoyed it share it if you think your friends will enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't done so already I will be back on Monday with a brand new video but until then thanks for hanging out and I will talk to you later later. See ya.